What's up, everybody? I'm Najee Adams. And I'm Hunter Jacobs. And you're listening to the Hoop Ball Nets Podcast. We got a pretty good episode for you guys today. We're going to get into the Nets' last three games, and uh, we're going to talk about how close and how far away they are from making the playoffs because it's a super tight race. The for best the race eighth. in the NBA. Exactly. It's a super tight race for the six, seven, then eight seeds. And uh, it's one of by far the biggest topic in the Nets Twitterverse right now and just Nets basketball as a whole. But we'll get into that later. Um, let me get to the intro. Thank you guys for uh, tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to the Hootball Nets podcast on iTunes. You can look up Hootball Nets. You can look up Brooklyn Nets for the first one that comes up either way. And, um, yeah, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you leave a five-star rating and review. All reviews are getting read on the podcast. Unfortunately, we don't have one to read today. So uh, that's where you guys come in. Make sure you leave one so we can read one next episode. Uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter at HoopBallNets. Ask us questions. Shoot us uh, your responses to the games, reactions, anything like that. We're glad to see it. We love fan interaction. And, uh, yeah. Uh, shout out to Hawaiian House Kona Coffee Company for sponsoring this podcast and every other hoop ball podcast. You can find them on Twitter at Hi Kona Coffee, H I K O N A Coffee, and uh, yeah, give them a tweet. Let them know Hoop Ball Nets sent you, and uh, make sure you go order some of their coffee on Amazon. Me and Hunter have both tried it. We uh, had it when we were uh, doing our midterms last semester, and it uh, helped get us through the night. So it'll probably help you guys too. But yeah, let's get into the uh, real episode now that the intro is done. Woo! The Nets played the Celtics on March and 30th. Got blessed by the fact that Kyrie Irving and Al Horford were out. The Celtics are a horrible team when Al Horford sits. If Horford was playing, it might have even been enough to win. But without both of them, pretty easy win for the Nets. And uh, sitting players is going to be helping the Nets out. Because the Bucks just clinched the first seed in the East. So, that means that next game, they're probably going to rest everyone, being that it's their first game off the clinch. And let's just hope that it uh, plays in the Nets' favor and they can clutch out a win. Yes. I believe Giannis will probably sit, which him and Brogdon and Miritich are hurt. Giannis might rest. That could be enough alone for the Nets to win, hopefully. As long as they don't get cooked by Sterling Brown. And Pat Connaughton. We should be good. Jesus, Hunter just rammed his head against the wall. <laughs> but <laughs> So on to the game itself. The uh, Nets won 110-96. to uh, The biggest lead the Nets had was 19. They shot 45.8% from the field, 31.6% from the three-point line. And 78.6% from the free throw line, while the Celtics shot 42.2% from the field and 40% from the three point line. Uh, they won the turnover battle 12 to 15, and they out rebounded the Celtics 40 to 39. This was a typical Celtics game, even when they have Kyrie. They take over in the first half, get a double digit lead. Then the second half comes, the other team comes back, gets a 20-point lead, and blows them out. That's how the Celtics season has gone. Reverse of last year, where they would come back from 20-point leads every game. Um, yeah, I, I honestly haven't watched too much Celtics basketball. I don't think I've ever really watched that much Celtics basketball. Because I'm a Lakers fan, but... Smart man is disappointing to watch. Uh, Jason Tatum, small forward, started at the small forward. Uh, he's probably the best player on the team without... Kyrie and Horford, so uh, That's fair you'd expect say. him to go off. He did not. 30 minutes, 9 points, 4 of 9 from the field. He wasn't that assertive. Two rebounds, three assists, one steal, a lackluster game from Jason Tatum. He doesn't, he doesn't take a, t- a ton of shots, and his shot selection is subpar. So until he starts taking charge and taking more shots, which won't happen as long as Kyrie's on the team, he's going to be stuck in limbo as an average small forward. Um, Marcus Morris started at the power forward, uh, played 29 minutes, scored 16 points on 4 of 11 shooting, knocked down two threes, added five rebounds, and a steal. Aaron Bain started at the center, only played 17 minutes. Jalen Brown played 31 minutes off the bench, nine points on 30% shooting, shot 10, shot 10 shots, made three of them, uh, 
had six rebounds. Terry three Rozier assists. and Marcus Smart combined for 11 points on four of 18 shooting. Surprising because Rozier usually plays amazing when he starts for Kyrie, but didn't play well in this one. Yeah, you're uh, in the camp that you would not be mad if Terry Rozier was your starting point guard. Not at all. <laughs> That's crazy. He would, he would be very confident as the full-time starting point guard, and he'd play well full-time. I don't know if I would be cool with Terry Rozier as my starting point guard, but I'm not going to say he's a bad player. He's an average NBA player. Oh, he's above average. He's an above average NBA player. And, um, yeah, Robert Williams played eight minutes, took one shot, didn't really do much. Gordon Hayward, team high, 19 points, 7 of 12 shooting, 1 of 3 from the three-point line, 6 rebounds, 3 assists. He's very random. Yeah, he has these games where sometimes I don't think he's – ever looked like the old Gordon Hayward this season? I mean, there was like two or three games he had 30 that you, yeah. you saw flashes of it. But, but like never he's been never been able string. Yeah, he's never been able to sustain that kind of that kind of value and that kind of production. So it, honestly, it's kind of sad because there's I mean, I'm not going to say it's not possible. Like maybe this off season he'll work and he'll get it back for next season, but this season has been a disappointment for what fans were hoping for. Yeah, and I feel like it was. It, it has to be taking a toll on him too, because he has to be disappointed in himself. Because this isn't how he wants to play. He everyone knows he's better than this. Yeah, I mean, earlier in the season, it, like his teammates were calling him out for not trying his hardest. Marcus Smart was literally abusing him in practice, like pushing him when he was posting up and stuff, knocking him down. They said it turned to a point where, like, Hayward's face was red. He was going hard. He started playing, like, the old Gordon Hayward in that practice. Then the very next game is the game he had 30 points off the bench. So, So the the fire was lit under him, but it just hasn't carried on for the whole season. True. Um, I hope Gordon Hayward can turn things around because I want to see him succeed. And I honestly believe he'll have a better season next season. Um, Daniel Tice, 20 minutes. 16 points, 7 of 9 from He's the field. He's a solid bench, a big man. He, he, he plays honestly his role is. Well. He honestly is. Um, I don't. I always wanted to say this. I don't know why the Celtics took Robert Williams. I don't know why the Lakers took Mo Wagner. I think Mitchell Robinson was the best player that could have been taken by both teams. But. Yeah. I mean, the Lakers can be blamed more so than the Celtics because Robert Williams was supposed to be a lottery pick and fell that far. So the Lakers passed on both Williams and Robinson rather than For Mo Wagner, Wagner, who was a great college player, but his NBA game is not amazing. Another player on the Celtics box score that made an appearance was Brad Wanamaker, who had eight points on three of three shooting in 12 minutes, but fouled out. He in fouled out minutes. in 12 minutes. Amazing. What a guy. What a guy. Brad Wanamaker. On to the Nets box score. Nothing too spectacular. Only players to score in double digits were D'Angelo Russell, Joe Harris, Jared Allen, Damari Carroll, and Karis LeVert. We will say Karis LeVert has been getting his legs back under him lately. He's looked much, much, much better. And the Nets are going to need that if they are to make the playoffs because D'Lo can't do it all by himself. And it's honestly better when he's not taking 24 shots a game and we get to distribute the shot and uh, have other players get involved. And Damari Carroll, 28 minutes, 13 points, 5 of 13 from the field, 1 of 6 from the three-point line, four rebounds, one assist. And uh, it, it was a decent game for Damari Carroll, nothing crazy. Uh, almost pulled off the D-Lo special, but he was one shot shy. Do you recall that this is the starting lineup that I said I wanted the Nets to go with long term? I had said I wanted them to start Joe Harris at the two. Karooks or Carroll at the three and Karooks or Carroll at the four. I mean, considering they're three and seven in their last ten, buddy, I, I mean, don't know look, how hot that's look, working look, out for look, look. This is their best talent lineup. If it doesn't work, that's chemistry issues, which the Nets have not shown to have. So, I don't know that that is the issue, but I do think that's the best lineup when it comes to starting a game. Although Karooks tends to sit at the end of games because he's not ready yeah, for the he, end of he game He only lineup. played yeah. six minutes in this game. He keeps starting and getting benched almost immediately for the yeah. whole game. He played six minutes and had no fouls. And he hit, hit the only shot he took. So there's not really an excuse as to... His, his play wasn't the reason he got taken out. It was probably a matchup issue. Jared Allen, 
29 minutes, 10 points on 10 of 3 shooting, 6 of 8 from the free throw line. I said 6 of 8. No, you said 10 of 3 shooting. 10 of 3, wow, that's crazy. 10 points on 2 of 3 shooting, my bad. 6 of 8 from the free throw line, 7 rebounds, 3 assists, 2 blocks, and uh, 2 turnovers. Only had 1 foul. All right, yeah. Uh, His disappointment (laughs) continues. All right, yeah. He only had one foul. His disappointment continues. I'm sorry. There's there's not much good I'll say about this guy until he proves to me that he can constantly provide double-doubles like the top 15 centers in basketball. Joe Harris, do you think Jared Allen is better than, let's see, uh, Willie Cauley-Stein? They're about the same. Yeah, I'd probably say they're about the same, too. He's worse than Capella. He's worse than Adams. He's worse than DeAndre Jordan, Miles Miles Turner. Turner. He's worse than Miles Turner? Yes, 100%. He's worse than Miles Turner. Miles Turner's the most defensive player of the year, and he could shoot. Is he worse than Mitchell Robinson? Oh, that's a tough one. See, if I was talking about the Nets right now, I would rather have Mitchell Robinson playing. As good as Jared Allen is at blocking shots, Mitchell Robinson is better. And Jared Allen's offensive game is lacking, His and so is Mitchell Robinson's. But I'd rather have him and believe in him to have a good performance over Jared Allen. Is he worse than Jonas Valanciunas? Yes. Is he, and last one, my bad. Is he worse than DeAndre Ian? Yes. Okay. I I agree with most of them, including the Mitchell Robinson one. Is he a worse than Enos Cantor? Uh, offensively, yes. Defensively, no. Yeah, I mean right. they would be a good offense defense tandem. But um, moving on, Joe Harris, thirty four minutes, thirteen points on five of nine shooting, three of five from the three point line, eight rebounds and two assists. One steal, almost fouled out, but uh, thankfully he did not. All reliable, didn't do too much this game, played a team high 34 minutes, and he basically did what he was needed to do. Do you believe he'll be on the team next season? Yes. Yes. For sure? Definitely. He's their, He's really their only sharp shooter when yes. you look at it. Like, he is. He's their only reliable three-point shooter. I understand D'Lo has made the most three-pointers in a net single season history, but he also takes... He took 12. He probably takes like 6, 7, 8 a game. Joe Harris is efficient in the amount of three points. Out of these three, you have to bring one back to the team. Damare Carroll, Rondé Hollis-Jefferson, Ed Davis. Ed Davis. Easily. Over Damare Carroll? Yes. That's tough. I mean, if we're replacing them, we're looking to replace Damare Carroll with Tobias Harris or Kevin Durant anyway. So we might as well ship him out, bring in Tobias or KD. And uh, Jimmy Butler, maybe? That's and then tough. keep Ed Davis on the bench. I don't Am know. I wrong, though? I mean, Ed Davis is a good bench spark plug and big man. If the Nets offseason goes how we want it to go and how Nets fans want it to go, DeMar and Carroll isn't starting anyway. Yes, but, so, but he's played most of the season on the bench, and he's okay with a bench roll, so why ruin chemistry? I would rather good? have Ed Davis, because do we remember what the Nets' offensive rebounding was like before they had Ed Davis last season? That's true. It's still not great now, but... It's much, but, much better. So they had five offensive rebounds in the, the game against the Celtics. Ed Davis had three of them, and Damare <laughs> Carroll had the other two. I'm just saying... <laughs> So they, they would have had Ed zero Davis. without both of them. <laughs> they need Ed Davis more than they need DeMar Carroll if they get a top-tier free agent. I believe Michael Rondé Hogan. Hollis is out of the question. He'll be on a new team 100% next season. Easily. He's getting D- DMP CDs now. So, I mean, they're already sh- like getting ready to live life without him. Spencer Dinwiddie only played 23 minutes. He had 8 points on 3 of 12 shooting. And uh, 0 of 6 from the 3-point line. Four assists, three rebounds. Not his greatest game. Uh, Big Jarrett, Jarrett Dudley, 23 minutes, six points, two of four from the field, two of four from the three-point line. One of his early season stat lines that we love to see. And uh, Karis LeVert, 29 points. Oh, I wish 29 points. 29 minutes, 15 points, a five of 13 shooting. Uh, one of four from the three-point Four point steals. Line. Four steals. He always gets a good amount of steals. I remember his first game back, he had like four or five steals. And then lastly, D'Angelo Russell, 29 minutes, 29 points, 12 of 24 from the field, four of 12 from the three-point line. He added 10 assists, only four turnovers, and three rebounds two to go steals. along with two steals. 
And uh, yeah, before we move on to the next game, I just want to bring up the Jared Dudley Twitter conversation he had with somebody. He basically told a fan that uh, these NBA games mean nothing. Don't sleep on him because he's been bad in NBA games. He would body a fan one-on-one. So my question to you is, do you think you can beat Jared Dudley in a one-on-one? No. <laughs> he own... All right, I'll say no simply because he's six foot seven. If Jared, so do you think you can beat Isaiah Thomas? No, <laughs> but he's at, he's way more he's way faster and more skilled. Do you think if, you can beat Spud Webb? No. <laughs> <laughs> if Jared Spud Webb today maybe, <laughs> but if Jared Dudley was my height with the skills and speed he has now, I could most definitely be him, a hundred percent. But. Like players who are my height, like Isaiah Thomas, would definitely kill me, a hundred percent. I think I could probably be in the NBA right now. I could definitely take. Nah, I'm looking at this Nets roster. There's not a single person that I could beat. I'm not gonna lie. I could probably beat Gershon Yabusele. <laughs> no, you can't, <laughs> bro. Bro, Gershon Yabusele will sit on you. <laughs> you nah, nah, nah. I definitely can't beat Gershon Yabusele. You can't I beat could... anyone in the NBA. No, 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 no. no. Maybe Brandon. I Knight. could take. <laughs> I could definitely take. I'm looking at him right now. Bonzi Colson. <laughs> no. Bonzi Colson. <laughs> You're just naming people. I the only NBA player that I Bonzi think you Coulson. could take. Yo, he's looking at Bonzi Colson <laughs> for his height and weight. Bonzi Colson six, is 6'6", six, six. Six, 225. Ah, uh, dang, I'm only 5'10", but I could definitely take Bonzi Colson. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. There's uh, not one player in the NBA you could take. But if I had to pick one that I'd give you a fighting chance. Jordan Lloyd. Maybe. That, that may be the one. That may be the one. Do I think I could take Jared Dudley? Not a chance. He would honestly just body me and yeah, do layups every that's game. That's what I'm saying. But if he was my height, that's a different story. The di- okay, you might never... Do you think you could score on Jared Dudley? Oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. I got the scat. I'm not, I'll hit some shots in his face. I'm not going to like I'll probably drive by Jared Dudley. No. Yes. He will swat I can you. blow by Jared Dudley. My points are coming from the three or nothing. <laughs> I'm not going to the basket. I'm going to get pinned. Um, let us know on Twitter what NBA players you guys think you can beat. If there is none, <laughs> then still tweet us. There is none. But um, I feel like at least there's one guy that we everyone knows that they can beat in the I can NBA. take Nate Robinson. He's not oh, in the league like, no He more. will jump over you. Not anymore. <laughs> he will jump over you. Yeah, I can take Ray Allen now. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Did you, you see him in the All-Star game? Did you see him in the celeb game? Okay, did you see him in the All-Star game? You. He was trash in that little four-point play thing with Del Curry. I can take Del Curry. No. Definitely. No. He's washed. So... I ask you in this spirit of 1v1, you know how another popular form of pickup basketball is 3v3. If you had to pick three nets to make your your pickup 3v3 team, who are you picking? Am I on the team? No. Oh, okay. You're the head coach. Okay. Um, I'm definitely picking D'Lo, of course. Uh, D'Lo? Are we playing against other, other teams? Yes. Okay, so D'Lo, are we shooting? Is there three point? Is everything yes. ones and twos? Ones and twos. Okay, so then Game we don't. Really, so then I don't really need Joe Harris. So I'm gonna go D'Lo, Karis. Nah, D'Lo, Spencer, Dinwiddie, because Spencer Dinwiddie's mixy. D'Lo, Spencer, Dinwiddie, and Jared Allen, simply for uh, height. What about you? I am most definitely. Going D'Lo, Spencer, Dinwiddie, Karis LeVert. I'm got, my team would destroy you. No. We would get every board. Actually, no, no, no. D'Lo, Spencer, Dinwiddie, Damare, Carroll. I do believe that Jared Allen can't keep up with Damare, Carroll. That's a mismatch. I mean, we're not. Demar Cow's not a knockdown shooter. I'm leaving he's him open. A, no, living, he's if, a good if, shooter. If we let, I'm he's letting Demar Cow beat me. I'm not gonna lie. I'm letting Demar Carroll beat me. Well, you see, when we're playing other teams in the league, Demar Cow's gonna get his buckets. Okay, but when you play the 76ers, 
Who who's guarding Embiid? All right, that's, that's he's scoring all you twenty-one. That, you that's, that's game that's, over. That's the second best or third best okay, three Timberwolves cat. You can play the Rockets. Capella will light you up. Okay, but that's because they have Harden and Chris Paul. And the Timberwolves, okay, let's go. all the focus is on Cat, so I'll let Tyus Jones beat me. Okay, let's let's play the Trailblazers. We saw what Joseph Nurkic was doing before he got injured. He's bodying you. And Jared Allen holds them to 35 and 20. So what okay. difference does it make what okay, he's going to do? He's a big body. I'll let Damari Carroll be the biggest body on my team. It's fine. <laughs> on to that. Let, let us know what 3v3 team you would pick on Twitter. We love to interact with you guys, so make sure you interact with us. That's it for the Celtics game. On to the Bucks. The Nets ended up losing. Why is Bonte Colson still on my screen? The Nets ended up losing um, 121 to 131. And uh, we wish this was an April Fool's joke, but it's not. They ended up getting almost blown out at a point. Uh, the Bucks' biggest lead was 22, and the Nets' biggest lead was 3. There were 18 lead changes, mostly in the third quarter. The Bucks shot 50%, 87% from the free throw line, 26 of 30. The Nets shot 41.5% from the field, 79.4% from the line, 27 of 34. So it was pretty even from there. The biggest discrepancy was turnovers, where the Nets lost 23 to 14. That's an early season turnover battle. That's a preseason turnover battle. Remember their turnovers in the preseason were insane. It was like 22 to 6. They They ended up winning the rebound battle by 15. They out offensive rebounded the Bucks. 16-6. 16-6. to six. How many did Ed Davis have? We're about to find out time. right now. We'll start with the Nets this time. Ed Davis had three offensive rebounds. Karis Avert had the most offensive rebounds on the team with four. Everyone who played a minute had an offensive rebound. That's crazy. They had 16, so yeah. Um, Damari Carroll, 34 minutes, 20 points on 6 of 14 shooting. Another 2 of 6 from the 3-point line, which is why I said I'm letting Damari Carroll shoot in that scenario. Uh, 6 of 8 from the free throw line, 5 rebounds, 2 assists. He dropped 20, A steal though. and a block. Okay. And he had a team he also, high plus He also 10. hit 8 free throws, which wouldn't be happening in street but, ball. But... He also had a team high plus 10, and Jared Allen had minus 12. Who cares about a plus minus in a pickup Um, game? All right, I understand, but that means he's positively impacting the game. Okay, Jared Allen will positively impact the game in a 3v3. I don't think so. I think so. Um, Rodion Skarook, 16 minutes, 4 points, bad shooting night, 1 of 5. Baby AK is falling off, and it's not fun to see. I feel like if the Nets do make the playoffs, he'll have one of those, like, Rememberable game. Rememberable? <laughs> That's not a word. He'll have one of those memorable games, and uh, we'll never forget it, which is the definition of memorable. <laughs> that is uh, indeed the uh, definition of memorable. Uh, you won't forget it. Uh, <laughs> Rony Oscrooks, 16 minutes, 1 of 5 from the field, 1 of 4 from the 3 point line, 4 rebounds, and a steal. Jared Allen, 27 minutes. 10 points on 4 of 7 shooting over on from the 3 point line. He attempts like a 3 or 2 threes every other game. And it always seems like he goes like 0 of 1, 0 of 2. But it's good that he's taking them. 9 rebounds. No, it's two, not. <laughs> 2 assists and 2 blocks. Um, Joe Harris, all reliable. 17 points, 6 and 9 shooting. 5 of 7 from 3. 6 rebounds, 3 assists. Did what he always does. Good to see. Speaking of Spencer Dinwiddie, he had 19 Who minutes. Was speaking of Spencer Dinwiddie? When you said did what he said he always does, I thought of Spencer Dinwiddie. I did not say that. You did. You said did what he always does. <laughs> oh, did. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like Spencer Dinwiddie? Did what he always does. I guess. Spencer Dinwiddie, 19 minutes, 12 points on 3 of 8 shooting, <laughs> all 3 from the 3 point line. Uh, didn't really do much else. One rebound, one assist, and one steal. Oh, have I got words to say for Jared Dudley in this game? Oh, yeah. Big Dud didn't play too well. Dropped a dud. <laughs> yeah. He had 21 minutes, two points, one of six from the field, all of three from the three-point line, two rebounds, one assist, and uh, two steals. Ed Davis, Big Ed, 19 minutes. Four points, 14 rebounds, an absolute monster on the boards. Karis LeVert, his best game since returning. 
30 minutes, 24 points off the bench, 8 of 15 from the field, 4 of 8 from the three-point line, 4 rebounds, 6 assists, no steals. On to D'Angelo Russell. D'Lo, 35 minutes, 28 points, 9 of 27 from the field. Close to the D'Lo special, but uh, thankfully he didn't get it. 4 of 12 from the three-point line yet again. 6 of 6 from the free-throw line, 10 rebounds, 3 assists, 6 turnovers, which obviously isn't good. And uh, yeah, I wrote about this in my st- article, Stockwatch. He, I put D'Lo in the stock down section, which I think is like his second time there this whole season. But he has to, This is he's picked the worst time to get reckless with the ball. And over the past like two weeks, he's averaging five turnovers, turnovers I understand he had 28 points. This was a terrible game for him. Terrible. He I don't know about terrible. He terrible, had 28 terrible, and 10. Terrible. He shot 33% from the field, turned the ball over six times, and got destroyed by Eric Bledsoe. With, now let's move to his stat line. Eric Bledsoe in 34 minutes had 29 on 10 of 19 shooting with 5 rebounds, 7 assists, 5 steals, and 2 blocks. The man had 10 cash counters in fantasy. He had 7 defensive stats, shot 53% from the field. He did no wrong in this game. It's Eric Bledsoe. I understand he's good, but... but. Where's the defense? Where? This is the guy. Eric Bledsoe, and there was a conversation around the All-Star break that Eric Bledsoe should have been uh, in the All-Star game instead of D'Lo. I don't agree, but... uh, I do believe he should have made it over his teammate, Chris Middleton. Yeah, I definitely agree with that one. Uh, Speaking of Chris Middleton, he uh, did not play this game. He was injured with an illness, basically just a DMP because they're arresting players. Um, Giannis Antetokounmpo, uh, the Greek freak, a monster, likely the MVP. Had one of his worst shooting games in a while. 9 of 23, 39%. Still had 28 points, 11 rebounds, a steal, and a block. Sterling Brown, who's been going off. Hopefully the Nets can stop him in their next game. He didn't do too well this game. 35 minutes, yes, 14 points, on 6 of 11 shooting, with 5 rebounds, 3 assists, and a steal. It's Sterling Brown. That's that's, that's, that's good, good for him. him, yeah. Brook Lopez, 33 minutes, 14 points, on 5 of 11 shooting. Surprising he only hit 1-3. Yeah, the, the Bucks didn't do too oh well from 3 Oh my god, 2 steals and 4 blocks. Yeah, if you're letting... Uh, Brook Lopez has never been the type of guy to get a ton of rebounds. He's more so been a def- he's not like a defensive anchor, but four blocks from Brook Lopez is still not that like if you're the Nets giving up four blocks to Brook Lopez, it's a problem. And then um yeah, that's really it. George George Hill. Yes, that is the the bench guard that the Nets always get lit up by is like Devin Harris, Patty Mills, Raul Nito, all these <laughs> random people that, DJ Augustine. that score 39 points off the bench on them. Like George Hill had 22 on 8 of 11 shooting with three assists in 27 minutes. And that's it for the Bucks game. On to the Raptors game, which the Nets also lost by 10, 115 to 105. Um, it... it it the the Nets hung in there in the end, but it was just too much for them to. The deficit was yes, just too big yes. for them to so, come back from. So D'Angelo Russell's stat line will appear as though he had a fantastic game. I mean, not fantastic, but a solid game. The last three minutes of the game completely saved his horrible game, which that's all right. He still got it done and almost brought them back, but. Had he done it a little bit earlier, they could have won the game. The Nets ended up shooting a better percentage than the Raptors, 47.7% from the field, while the Raptors shot 419 But the Raptors did attempt 105 shots, while the Nets only attempted 86. 19 more shots is likely due to the fact that the Nets lost the turnover battle, 14-7. to And, and they got out offensive rebounded, 17-9. But they only ended up losing the rebound battle. They ended up winning the rebound yes, battle by one. Yes, but that's because one. the Raptors missed more shots. True. Um, we'll start with the Raptors box score. Kawhi Leonard, an absolute monster. It, he didn't shoot that well, but still top 10 player in the league. Easily. I know who the monster was in this game. I'll go next. 34 minutes, 26 points, 11 of 25 from the field. Didn't knock down a three. Attempted four. Nine rebounds, three assists, and uh, only one personal foul. Pascal Siakam, the most improved player in the NBA by False. far, Not by a true. mile. The most he has pro- the award locked and loaded. The most improved loaded. player is on the Nets. His name is D'Angelo Russell. Now, nah, locked and loaded, Pascal Siakam, Spicy P got this award. 
He had 28 points on 11 of 21 shooting, 3 of 7 from deep, 10 rebounds, 5 assists. He hit two straight threes in the corner at one point, had the Raptors running away with the game. If he scores like this in the playoffs, they're coming out of the East. That's the bottom line. I think the I don't think the Bucks are making it out the playoffs. I said this before. I feel like they're that regular season team that just goes way Same too hard. Same as the Nuggets. Way too hard and then just shanks it in the playoffs. Same as the Nuggets. I think whoever's coming out of the East is between the Celtics, Raptors. I'm going to say it's the Raptors, to be completely honest. I think it's going to be a Raptors-Warriors final with the Warriors winning in like five. Four. Yeah, it's, it's not really a competition when you have a team like the Golden State Warriors. Um, Mark Gasol. He has been... Okay, so I'll say there's too many mouths to feed because I I believe he is playing all right basketball. His stats are just so bad. His his fantasy stats are not there anymore. He's not putting up big points. He just doesn't have a huge role with the team. He hasn't gotten adjusted to playing with them yet. Yeah, um... Nick Nurse kind of, you know, substitutes and plays more, gives more minutes to whoever fits the matchup between Marcus Hall and Serge Ibaka. This game happened to be Marcus Hall because they were playing against Jared Allen. He had uh, eight points on three of ten shooting, nine rebounds, six assists, and four steals. Um, Danny Green didn't play too well, only two points on one of five shooting. Kyle Lowry didn't play too well either, 33 minutes, 10 points on three of 11 shooting. And then uh, Serge Ibaka absolutely destroyed the Nets, 23 minutes in, uh, 23 points in 23 minutes, basically a point a minute. I hate when people say that, but it's still, it's, it's, I guess it's true in this scenario. Eight of 15 from the field, five of five from the three point line, 12 rebounds, two assists, and uh, yeah, almost fouled out with four personal fouls, but managed to not. And then on to the Nets. Um, so, aside from D'Lo, no one really had big numbers. Rondé Hollis had a sighting in this game. Nine minutes, four points, two of five shooting, six rebounds, three turnovers. I will say... Great nine minutes. I will, <laughs> I will say that Rodion's Karugs played decent. 11 points in 19 minutes, 5 of 7 from the field, 4 rebounds, 2 assists, and a block. Trevion Graham also played after not playing for a while or not playing a lot of minutes. He only had 8 minutes in this one. 3 points, 1 of 2 from the field, 1 of 2 from 3 with an assist. No turnovers. Yeah. Karis Levert had his worst game in a long time as well. Three points, one of nine from the field, one of four from deep. Missed both of his free throws and had two rebounds and five assists. Um, Jared Allen, 27 minutes, 12 points on six of six shooting, uh, nine rebounds and uh, a block. N- not great, but also not horrible from him. And then, yeah, like we said, D'Angelo Russell, 27 minutes, I mean, 27 points, 32 minutes, 11 to 25 from the field, seven rebounds, six assists, three turnovers and a steal. With all that being done, we're going to get into uh, just a couple of bit of tidbits of news. Um, both Sean Marks and Kenny Atkinson are likely being extended. Um, I think it's a great move for the Nets. Do I think Kenny Atkinson... We've talked about this on a previous episode. I don't think Kenny Atkinson is the coach that's going to get them to the championship if they win a championship. But I do think he's a great coach for right now. And he's basically built a, co- a culture for the Nets that... A lot of other teams don't and can't build. He has made t- taken the Nets along with Sean Sean Marks from a team who traded all of their draft picks and in probably the worst trade in NBA history, and he's turning them into a playoff contender before both the Lakers and the Knicks. So I'm gonna say that him and Sean Marks have both deserved this contract extension, and I can't wait to see what they have in store for the next era of Nets basketball. I do like, although it's anticlimactic for the fans, I do like how Sean Marks has a a boring trade deadline approach. He kind of lets the season play out, makes minor moves to clear up space so that he can have bigger off seasons, which I believe that's the way to do it because he, he believes at this point, like everybody should, that they're not winning this year. The Warriors are winning this year. 95% chance the Warriors win this year. I don't really see anyone beating them. And the only team that really can is probably the Rockets. And if it happens, it happens. But 
I, I think the Warriors are probably going to breeze through the playoffs, as always. And Marks will have a big offseason. Let's get into uh, the NBA standings and what is going to happen with the Nets playoffs. So right now, ESPN gives the Nets a 69.8% chance to make the playoffs and has them finishing at 40 and 42. Uh, as the eighth seed, which as means the, eighth the Bucks seed. are in store. So the Bucks right now, they've clinched the first seed. So we're hoping they sit a ton of their players for the Nets upcoming matchup against them, which would obviously help the Nets win. Right now, the Nets... So, separating the 6th seed and ninth seed, there is one game. So, so this is what I say. For the, the possibility of fun and a playoff run, the best case scenario is the Nets end at the 8th seed. You think they can beat the Bucks? Brogdon and Miritich are out. The best case is that they have the 8th seed. Yeah. The Raptors are unbeatable. The Sixers are playing well. And then they get a potential Pacers matchup that's very winnable if the Pacers get past the Celtics. So, obviously, they're not going to go in the finals. But for the longest possible run that they can have, the 8th seed would be the best option. Which is probably what's going to happen since the Pistons and Magic have a pretty easy schedule and the Nets and Heat play on the last game of the season for who's going to get the eighth seed, most likely. I don't know why, but I just feel like the Nets are going to make the playoffs. I don't know what it is. I just have a feeling that we're, we're not missing the playoffs this year. After everything that's going our way and after every how good this season has been, I just can't see us missing the playoffs. The Nets right now, 39-40. and 40, They have the Pacers, Sixers, and Bucks. No, Pacers, Heat, and Bucks to play. And uh, we hope the Bucks rest their players. We As hope, they should, because they just clinched the first seed. We don't think the Sixers are going to rest their players. The Pacers. We don't think the Pacers are going to rest their players because they're fighting for home field for home court advantage with the Celtics. And then uh, it's going to come down to that Nets versus Heat matchup. Both teams are going to be fighting for the playoffs, and it's honestly going to come down to who wants it more, who's the better team, and hopefully that team will be the Nets. I do have faith. But I also do know how sports works at times. And I could very well see Dwayne Wade hitting a fadeaway half-court shot in D'Angelo Russell's face to end that game, the 82nd game of the season, to give him another two weeks of his career. I mean, I could see it too, but I just don't. I just don't believe in my heart that that's going to happen. I think the Nets are making do the Do I hope it happens? No. Will I be happy for D Wade if it does? Yes. I feel like everyone will be. I feel like even the Nets. Nah, the Nets won't be happy for D. Well, the players themselves will. As a team, though, it's going to be demoralizing. But all in all, I just I see the Nets making the playoffs. We just got to get past the Bucks. We have to win this Bucks game. It is a must win for the Brooklyn Nets. And if they lose it, they're going to be fighting for the eighth seed with the Heat. And uh, on to the Brooklyn Bowl of the week. Uh, it's not close. Once again, D'Angelo Russell is the Brooklyn Bowler of the week. 32.6 minutes, 28 points, 4.3. Three-pointer, 6.7 rebounds, 6.3 assists, and 1.3 steals on 42.1% shooting in uh, the last three games. So what I will say, his field goal percentage is down. His shots are up. No one on the team has more than 12.3 shot attempts in the last three games. 12.3 per game. D'Lo has 25.3. So, he's really taking a majority of the shots, which is why his assists are down. His turnovers are up. His percentage is down. This is the wrong time to do that. I understand his stats are, are nice and he's making some clutch shots. This is the wrong time to take all these shots. I mean, I don't disagree. I said earlier, I like when the Nets offense is more so balanced and moving the ball and getting other players involved. And it's the wrong time for D'Lo to go cold. It's also the wrong time for D'Lo to average 4.3 turnovers over the past week. But at the end of the day, like he's their best player. And I feel like he's taking it upon himself to try and will them into the playoffs. Is that the right move? I don't believe so, but it's what he's choosing to do. And with a player like Dilo, you've got to give him freedom because that's when he thrives. And if he wasn't in this slump, everyone would be praising him. But we've got to take, 
we've got to take the good with the bad. We can't just say that D'Angelo Russell's our all-star player, and when he starts shooting bad, just abandon him. And when he's shooting well, we're like, oh, he's a monster. He's the best. We have to take the good with the bad in the 23-year-old D'Angelo Russell. And, um, yeah, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. All of the Nets nation around the world will be on pins and needles when the Nets take on the Bucks Saturday at 5 p.m. Uh, on NBA TV, it's one of only two games on Saturday, so uh, everyone's going to be tuning in. It's a must-win for the Nets, and uh, hopefully the Bucks rest their players. But we'll probably be live tweeting that game. Yeah, I'm gonna say we're gonna be live tweeting that game. But uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Make sure you go follow us on Twitter at Hootball Nets. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast at. Uh, you can look up Hootball Nets. You can look up Brooklyn Nets. Just press that subscribe button when we come up. Make sure you leave a rating and a review. Five stars, please. We're reading all reviews on the podcast. And uh, yeah, tweet us any questions. Tweet us any responses. Tweet us any feedback to the podcast. Uh, we would love to hear it. Love to see it. And uh, yeah, guys, show, shout out to Wine House Kona Coffee Company for sponsoring this podcast and every other hoop ball podcast. You can find them at Hi Kona Coffee on Twitter, H I K O N A Coffee. And uh, make sure you go pick up their po- their products off Amazon. You can follow your hosts on Twitter. I'm at Najee Adams underscore. If you don't know how to spell Najee, it's N A J E E A D A M S underscore. Hunters at Hunter underscore J K R on Twitter. Whew, that's a mouthful. Thank you guys for listening. We'll see you all next time.